What India watched in 2019? Yes, that is the annual release of Park, and it gives me great pleasure to talk about the important trends which emerged in the year gone by. Sunil Lalat joins us in his new avatar now to walk us through how Indian consumers consumed television in 2019. Fantastic to have you back, and thank you for joining us. My and pleasure. I'm introducing you in your new avatar. So before I talk about the report, let me talk about how things are things are at your end. Things are good. I mean, you know, we are we live in uncertain times, and perhaps there's a lot more fear, uh, and maybe it's some a lot of reality linked to that fear at this point of time. But the meters are working. People are watching television. If people are working out of home, believe me, they are watching a lot more television. Before we get into specifics of this report, and it's a lovely report. Thank you. Your core analysis is indicating that yes, Indians are consuming and spending a lot of time on smartphone and then the mobile devices, but that is not coming at the cost of TV. No, it's not. So if I look at a four-year trend, an average individual watched three hours and eleven minutes of television four years back, and is now watching three hours and forty-two minutes of television. That's thirty minutes up. An average home is now watching five hours forty minutes of television in India. So. I think TV is the screen of the home. It engages every individual. People will look at their phones. It's a device now, I think, attached to your body. So they will look at the phones. They may be watching video content. They may be watching text content. They will look at the phones. That's a reality, and that's a part of the experience of of consumers. But they go to new, if they want, they may see a breaking news on their phone because it could be an alert. It could be a share from somebody. But authenticity. Of content belongs to TV because it's highly editorialized, it's curated, and it's authentic. I think the Indian consumers got smart enough to know that now there is something which is not original news that emanates on their phone, but TV is not in that mode. I don't want to use the word fake news, but let me attempt the word fake news to rephrase my next question, which is that at a time when fake news has actually become a menace, do you think television? endorsement is very very important for any news channel and for any any news consuming viewer yeah i think so that you know tv and and the print the next day of that news gives a lot of credibility to what has happened uh, it's not about convention if i look at young people they are watching television i look at when i say young people I look at 2 to 12 12 to 19 19 to 25 25 35 45 plus 55 plus television viewing has grown year on year and it continues to be watched they may be doing other things while watching television so there may be some bit of that shared experience but they are watching tv their profile of what they watch is changing and the intensity with which they watch is changing but they are watching so how is the profile shift let's talk about category and then we'll talk about age wise age wise so, breakup so see the top 3 still remain the top 3 which is general entertainment because it works for the household movies because it it works a little more skewed towards men and news news grew last year right there were some big news events we had uh, bala court and related events we had the elections uh, which was a big news event we had other big news event 370 there was a lot of you know other smaller news events which took place and despite it being the highest rainfall year in the last 4 years in which usually tv does not grow <laughs> news went up right so news actually had a great great year in terms of viewing last year the joker in the pack last year was world cup yeah india reached the semi final yeah did that add to your numbers and is that the reason why these aggregated so, hours are looking strong? so sports sports is only 3 4% of viewing right it's not that big ipl came in multiples audio feeds and video feeds last year more than it ever has before so ipl saw a huge growth it saw a huge growth in viewing it saw a huge growth in advertising right i think the ipl strategy last year was a different strategy from the earlier years world cup had the same phenomenon it came in different video and audio feeds so it had that viewing right uh, overall television stayed stable it did not really grow right but the genres of say news uh, cricket oriented programming uh, genres like assamese bhojpuri they grew right the regional language had better growth than let's say hindi language which actually had a bit of a collapse had a bit of a drop in its growth uh you know english was 
purely confined to be a business language a couple of years ago. Now it's more like a conversational language, even in small towns, even in tier two cities. Yeah. But yet the regional TV viewing habits are increasing. And that's a wonderful finding in your report. Why is that? So when we look at recruiting audiences into the sample, uh, it's based on seven parameters. One of them is language spoken, language spoken most in the home. English is not the language spoken most in the home, right? It follows, so this actually represents what, what is true about India, right? Some of us speak English at our homes and it's probably our first language. We are really so small in that sense. And we can't magnify that for us to believe we are big, right? Given a lot of content is available now in multiple languages, it's well produced, it's well crafted over there. So people don't have a need to actually go to English being the first source of content. Some people who are familiar with their language will see that. Others where there's enough. So there's enough regional news today. right? And that category is growing really fast. And there's good quality production, good quality editorial. People will go there first. What is the millennial consuming? Watching TV? See, we are not tracking digital as a standalone, as a currency. Mm -hmm. We are tracking it because we are building a product over there. Right? to track it and to build a currency. We can talk about it later, to build a currency between TV and digital world. Right, But the key point over here really is that this is going to coexist. So let's recognize it's going to coexist. Young people are watching television too. If you look at the stories, they are coming from there. If you see what's happening, say, in the digital content space, the stars are from movie and TV. Right? Some new, new unique stars. The stories are just a little more liberal, but they are not very different. Hmm. Uh, for those who, or the naysayers who are saying, there is a dark future and a bumpy road for analog medium. Will they get it wrong? Because they've been getting it wrong from last couple of years. Yeah, so if I actually look at the count of number of people who don't have... So there are 300 million homes, 300 plus million homes. We've estimated Last year, 197 million homes have TV. So 200 million, 100 million homes don't have TV. Uh, if, we, if you're thinking that there are homes which have cut the cord, absolutely. That is really so small. It's really so small. It's not significant at all. Hmm. Nobody talks about the fact that if I look at the total television or LCDs and LED sales, it is not a contracting number. No, it's it not. It is still a growing number. It is. Is that a benchmark and harbinger of which way things are moving? No, I think what will happen is, so one of the big things that's helped uh, India is uh, uh, the initiation of what is called free dish, right? It's about close to 40 million homes, 30, 40 million homes. It's largely a phenomenon in Hindi-speaking markets. It's not there in the South. So everybody did not have to go for the conventional cable operators, uh, uh, operator connection or the conventional DDH operator connection. They opted for this because it offered enough channels, right? Now, the nature of channels on a free dish may be very different but people are watching them, right? So if people are watching them, you just have to go with the opinion that people are watching them. And young people are watching them, older people are watching them. A lot of what's being watched on your phone is actually catch-up TV. I missed a show at such and such time. It could be the most pop. So if I take the most popular watched Hindi shows, Hindi soaps, yep. uh, they are also the most popular watched Hindi product on digital. Oh, wow. Right? There will be some people who will watch shows which come purely on, say, pure digital play. I'm not denying that. It's obviously true, but that number is really very small. What are your thoughts on appointment viewing? They continue to happen. At 1.59 billion ads, seconds of ads last year, that industry which of, of marketers who's investing that money over there, which is anywhere ranging between 30, 35,000 crores, you can't wish that away. The impact the ad plays on TV is huge. 80% of TV is co-viewing, one plus one. A third of it is a family of four or five watching together. That's significant. Do you think India, in a sense, is a unique market? Because when I speak to, let's say, PVR or Inox, they've always told me that, look, going out in India to a movie theater is a celebration, which is not going to change. You think watching TV in India or in the Indian household is a habit which is not going to change? Yeah, I would imagine. Uh, it won't change, and I would like to believe that maybe there are other things happening in the home, right? I mean, the earlier uh, kitchen story used to be that, you know, somebody was sitting in front of a TV and cutting vegetables. Now they're doing things on their phone and watching TV, but they are sitting together and watching. 
So if you go to a kid's jhana, it's really interesting, right? Mm -hmm. In the kid's jhana, you find parents are watching the kids' shows with the kids. Increasingly, fathers are spending a lot of time with their sons and daughter watching television because it's a bonding moment. It's bonding with the TV. They may not be out there playing. I mean, the infra out there to play is not that great. They may not be out there playing, but they are watching it on with TV together. If I took a cut of just, you know, the big cities and looked at, it gets even truer. So when you look at the data, and the data says that average TV consumption in India is about three and a half hours. Now that's almost... Household is five hours, five hours plus. Five hours Individual plus. is three hours plus. Three hours. That means you are actually spending more than 10% of your day in watching TV. Yeah. Are you surprised with this kind of no. funding? No. This, therefore, we say it's the screen of the household, right? Why is it the screen of the household? Now, most homes, 98% of homes would be single, are single TV homes, right? And uh, the translation from content to advertising, there's a loss of only 1.5%, which means everybody watches the content, everybody watches the ads. Mm -hmm. They watch it together. So look at the power of the medium to influence the home. Has the cable penetration happened deep enough and now there is little scope for second screen which in a sense is going to be in challenge? I think, you know, there's 100 million homes still to get a TV. Most of them are going to get a TV. It's one of the first things you go and get. Right? Once you have electricity and gas coming to your home, it's one of the few things you first, first, first few things you go and get. And with infrastructure penetration now, you know, becoming that you will get gas, you will get water, you will get electricity as you go down the pop strata, as you go across the geography, you'll see more and more penetration. I won't be surprised. We will see what we have. We are right now doing the broadcast India study. We'll have an estimate at the end of the year. I will not be surprised if TV ownership has gone up. So why is the advertiser confused? So has the advertiser, if they are <laughs> confused. I don't think they are confused. They've continued to invest. If you look at the share of the top 10 advertisers, it's gone up over the last four years. Why would it go up? I agree, digital may be going up, but why would it have gone up on the top 10? The top 10 advertisers spend a lot of money. So right? They consolidate to almost 30% of the advertising. Hmm. So the sum and summary of this report is that Indian television habits, if at all, they are changing, but they're changing upside, not downside. Yeah. Okay. Bill Gates once said that you should we tend to overestimate the rate of change in the short term, underestimate it in the long term. True. So let's talk about it. Yeah. What do you think are the key trends in the industry? So I think it's not our business to project the future, to predict the future, but we are prepared for it. So one of the things that we are now working with, with broadcasters like yourselves and others, we are looking at your content as it's viewed on TV and looking at your content as it's going to be viewed on any other device. Because the true phenomenon is there is some viewing which is which is creeping out of the TV into there. For some of the content, there's a lot of that. Right? So I missed a soap, mm -hmm. I want to catch up with it. Or somebody else has a remote on the house, this is not my favorite soap, I will catch up on it because now I have the convenience of this access. Right? Uh, some of the content owners want to serve different ads. Most will want to, some of them have already started serving different ads. Some of them want to add it to the TV universe. It's our duty to be able to put this together, and that's what you're putting together now, right? So that you get better value being created of a lot of people. The advertiser versus broadcaster tussle is going to continue because that's the best way to bargain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just like IT within, between 1919 and 2000 was a high growth industry, and now it's more like a mature industry is still growing. Can I say the same for television as well? It's not a high growth industry, but it is still a stable double digit growth sector. It's a stable digital, it's a stable double digit growth sector. Uh, it is still going to grow in terms of rupees and value because three things are going to happen, right? More homes will get TV. As the economy grows, advertisers know this is the access to the home. A lot of our purchases are based on the influence of the home. We don't have homes, everybody leaving the house to go and stay separately. It may be in some urban phenomenon and a lot of it could be migration because workers or people are going from one city to the other. But by and large, we are staying at home. We are buying similar things within the house. So they know that there is a confluence of decisions which take place as to what is to be purchased. I am, if I'm not mistaken, under times like now, when the economy may not be at its best, and you know, there may be fears, somebody is not buying the five rupee biscuit, but they are buying the 20 rupee biscuit in much larger volume. Mm -hmm. 
that's the way how I guess consumption patterns have changed completely. That also tells you about what we need as comfort. Mm -hmm. so, right? And that decision is taking place in the household. Mm -hmm. Where are you surprised with the viewership habits? Not really surprised. I think it's been stable. Right? I thought that there may have been little more growth. It's been mm -hmm. stable. Oh, you were expecting growth. You were not expecting a contraction. Not a contraction. I would say not a contraction. It's stable. Okay. Right? Over four years, I think will, growth will come back. We will see that growth come back. Mm. Uh, because of technology, because of uh, you know apps, because of uh, connection and communication, we have time now. Do you think the way to look at the habits is that we are consuming TV and we are also consuming mobile? So the aggregate number is actually very large because suddenly Indians or everyone has more time and uh, everybody has more free time. So you should see TV not from a device point of view, you see from a content point of view. Mm. A lot of the content which is being consumed consumed outside the TV device is TV content. Okay. So whether it was IPL, whether it was elections, whether it's soaps, whether it's the World Cup last year, but about the same content going on different devices. You know, um, with the disclosure that we are a broadcaster and the TV growth is great for us, I'm going to ask a very basic question, which is that you don't think the relevance of TV is going to finish? TV will continue to be the most influential, most relevant medium because it allows you access into the home, it gives you access in the home. If you're an advertiser, you get the data you get is about the demographics, about the home and who's watching, with whom and when. That's not the data you get in any other medium. I'm liking the tone of the conversation, so I'm going to steer it away from the findings of the report to something about you. You've, you've managed a lot of businesses. When you look back and look at your career, what is one thing you like about your career? What is one thing you're grateful about your career? Television. Why is that? I think uh, India will always be about homes and the ability to learn and be able to in interact and influence the homes is the most important thing that you can do in this marketplace. What are your personal habits? How many hours of TV do you watch in a day? So I switch it off because every time somebody comes to my office, they think that's my favorite channel, <laughs> right? So I don't have it on <laughs> in the office. There are a lot of TV sets over here. Uh, I continue to be a big uh, consumer of news. Uh, so I continue to watch a lot of that. I like to watch sports. I think on the entertainment programming, especially in the English genre, uh, there's a lot more recency now because the digital services offer you shows that you don't get on TV, right? So that is a fact for a person like me who's at 59 years old, I am allowed to have those choices. But I hope you're tracking the stock market volatility on ET now. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you're 59. 60 and then senior citizen. That's how we define senior citizens. What's the next question, Lula? See, senior citizenship is only about your state of mind. I don't have a state of mind about that. I'm trying to find the next marathon to run given many of them are getting cancelled. So post 60, what do you want to achieve? I don't have, I don't set my goals about an age. Uh, I think that I was involved with Bark when I used to work for this very same network years ago. And as a member of BARC, as a member of the IBF board, I used to also be on the BARC board, and I'm glad that it got set up. I think is to build a more robust system for BARC in the next few months. Uh, we are moving from 44,000 homes as a panel to 55,000. Uh, we are looking at ways and means to add other ways of measuring content. So not just looking at TV content, but bringing the TV content that's seen outside over there. We've really enhanced our security measures. Uh, so the whole purpose of integrity, which is delivery on quality, is really important to us. Uh, and I think is to serve our clients and customers better. That's really important. Well, thank you for that. So I'm going to close the discussion with one simple question. How does your day start and how does your day end? And if you have to write a letter to your daughter, pour in all your experiences, she's 27 years old. Yeah. How will that letter start and how will that letter end? So my, I've been writing a letter to my daughter on her birthday every single year. Okay. So she has 27 year letters of, of record. Uh, I always talk to her about the concept of happiness. You can only create happiness for yourself when you share happiness with others. So to me, that is my universal belief, is how do I spread happiness? Well, what a wonderful thing. People look at IQ, which is intelligent question. Some talk about EQ, which is emotional question. You're talking about the happiness question. Yeah, you can call it HQ headquarters, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, really appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for sharing thank these wonderful findings of the report. Thank you. Thank you very much.